Hello everyone, Tyler King here with a new episode of New Review. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the Gary Newman album Strange Charm. So Strange Charm is released in November of 1986. Uh, it's the third and last album he's going to be releasing on his own record label, Numa Records. Um, the Wave team is back producing the bulk of this album, except for My Breathing, the opening song, which is going to be produced by Aid Orange, and New Thing from London Town, which is going to be produced by Bill Sharp of the band Shack Attack and Nick Smith. Returning players are going to be Russell Bell, Chris Payne, uh, thankfully they're back, uh, Dick Morrissey, and Tessa Niles. And producer Aid Orange is going to be playing guitar and keyboards on this album as well. Unfortunately though, a lot of the returning players on this album are only featured on one or two songs each. My Breathing is the first song on the album. It opens up ominously with this very discordant sounding synths in the background before it just erupts open into this very Middle Eastern a uh, synth pop song complete with acoustic guitar and the opening line on this song is assassination of the voice of god which is one of the best opening lines gary newman has ever put and it reminds me a lot of the opening line of this wreckage from the telecon album where he says and what if god's dead we must have done something wrong now even the female backing vocals by Tessa Niles, which I know I, I, I'm a very vocal f n not fan of, but even the backing vocals on this song complement it perfectly. Instead of being at the forefront, they are a little bit more muted, a little bit more breathy, a little bit more in the background of the instrumentation instead of taking center stage. Gary makes references to the army and his own declining popularity before we're treated to the first saxophone solo on the album by Dick Morrissey. However, it's very heavily reverbed and affected, and it doesn't lessen the song. And if anything, this is this is from from 1985 to like 1993. This is probably my favorite Gary Newman song. Unfortunately, the next song, Unknown and Hostile, opens up with some saxophone blast from Dick Morrissey, which you know I'm a giant fan of, uh, before we're treated to these very thundering drums and all the band comes in under Dick's saxophone wankery. And there's also some very obnoxious female backing vocals on this song. And besides the really loud, heavy guitar on it, I can't really say one part about the song that holds any interest to me. Next up we have The Sleep Room, which is a little bit more ominous feeling. It's a slower tempo. Lyrically, it actually reminds me a little bit of the song Conversation off of The Pleasure Principle. With Gary singing lines like, I'm not a hero, I'm no good. Musically, it's very bare. It's not as overproduced as a lot of the other songs on this album. There's these exotic percussion hits being done, holding down the rhythm section, these very icy synths all over the place. And I, I really wish a lot of the other songs on this album sounded like this and sounded like My Breathing. After that, we have New Thing from London Town, which is the song produced by Bill Sharp. It opens with these very heavy stadium-feeling drums, which a lot of the songs on this album have, uh, before the synth bass comes underneath it, and this synth lead comes over top of it, just kind of glides in over everything. It's a very noticeable change of pace, both instrumentally and production-wise, from the previous three songs, and from all the songs that are going to be on the rest of the album, which to me, Strange Charm suffers for. It feels more like a collection of songs than a coherent album. Lyrically, there isn't really much going on on this song, with Gary really just repeating the title of it over and over and over again, and the remaining lyrics of the song aren't particularly memorable. 
Following that, we have I Can't Stop, which opens with Tessa Niles going, I can't stop it, I can't stop it again, and it makes me want to hit the stop button. Luckily, once the instrumentation does come in, it's all fast drums and loud wailing guitar, and it holds its own, but then once Gary starts singing, he's singing again about, oh poor him, oh poor Gary. I'm sure I'm guilty of something new I've been fighting for so long, and it's just like, dude, we get it. Sing about something else, please. At, at least the chorus of the song is its one saving grace with the I Can't Stop refrain sung by the backing vocalist sung over Gary Newman's own vocal part. And then following that we have the title track, Strange Charm. And to me, if you're going to have a title track, it had better be a damn good song, which is one of the things that makes this song that much more disappointing. It's a dark synth funk song with synth bass all over the damn thing. Gary singing about nasty boys coming out to play, but probably the worst thing about the song is Gary is practically rapping the chorus. A nice ominous guitar solo about halfway through the song, but the damn song is about two minutes too long. And, and Gary for sure, he's trying to come off as dark and intimidating and tough, but he really comes off almost as being laughable. And then we have The Need, and The Need sees the return of Jess Lydiard, who was the drummer of Two-Way Army, both on their self-titled record and on their Replicas album, and he is wasted on this song. It opens with Tessa declaring, get the need, get it and you know that the song probably is not going to be very good, and almost immediately after that you are treated to a dueling saxophone solo, and then you realize the song is nearly seven minutes long. Yeah. And Jess's drumming on the song, it doesn't even sound like him. The days of Down in the Park and My Shadow in Vain are long gone, and, you know, this could have been Joe Schmo that Gary found on the street and invited in for a session, and I would be none the wiser. And then once Gary does start singing, the lyrics are some of the worst lyrics he has ever written. Hello, young thing. I've got reverse instructions in the back of my car. I mean, this is a condensed seven minutes of what makes late 80s Gary Newman so fucking bad. And there's no reason for it to be as long as it is. I mean, ab about maybe four or five minutes in, there's this interesting part where Jess is holding down the beat and this very hi-hat centric drum groove, but by then the damage is already done. And then finally we have This Is Love. Not This Is New Love, just This Is Love. Gary decides to leave the album off with another ballad. However, much like he did with I Still Remember off of The Fury, I can't fully get invested into this song. I mean, th this is another song where Dick Morrissey's saxophone playing just completely takes me out of it. And like, you know, A Child with a Ghost, where there, there was a saxophone solo on that song, at least on there, it kind of went with the feeling that Gary and company were trying to convey on that song. And on This Is Love, it just completely kills any emotion that I'm supposed to have about sadness and loss or all of that. And Gary's message just gets, gets lost in translation because of the saxophone. And unfortunately, I mean, the, the lyrics on the song I think are some of the best on the album, but fucking dick. Fucking dick. And that strange charm, um, like I mentioned when I talked about New Thing from London Town, my main issue with this album, okay, I have two main issues with this album. The first one being that 
it doesn't have the cohesiveness of any of Gary Newman's records so far, and I'm even talking about Warriors. I'm even talking about The Fury. I'm even talking about I Assassin, which up until this point are probably my three least favorite Gary Newman albums. And this one just feels like a sloppy collection of songs. They don't really gel well together. They don't go well together. I mean, on, on an album like Berserker or even Dance, you had this overall kind of sonic element that connected all of the songs together and on this you don't. It feels like Gary has thrown everything against the wall and it's just seeing what sticks and that's what's making it onto this album and because of that you get songs like The Need, you get songs like Like New Thing from London Town. I wish the album was a little bit more memorable than it is. I mean, that that being said, though, my my breathing is such a good song, and it feels so out of place. I mean, if I kind of wish that Aid Orange had produced the whole thing, because the one song that he did produce on this album is really the best song of Gary Newman's late 1980s career. And if I, if I had to choose favorites from this album, it would be My Breathing, Sleep Room, and I mean, I guess this is love. Um, even though the last one, it, it, it does feel phoned in. And by this point, I'm tired of Gary saving a ballad for the end of the album. And least favorite songs are definitely going to be The Need. Uh, Unknown and Hostile, and probably Strange Charm. I'm not going to say I Can't Stop, just because the chorus of that song is actually very enjoyable. Um, and kind of like I mentioned in the review of The Fury, this is not a Gary Newman album that I go back to really ever. I mean, outside of my breathing and, you know, maybe I can't stop, I hadn't heard a song from this album in maybe over a year preparing for this review. And in case you can't tell, I'm not a real big fan of it, and I'm also not a real big fan of the next few albums that he's going to come out with, but hey, there we go. Uh, so at the end of the day, I mean, I, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm torn between a four and a five, I mean, I, I guess I could give it a four and a half out of five, but it'd probably be closer to a four. So that's my review of Strange Charm. So what did you think of my review? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Is Strange Charm your favorite Gary Newman album? Is it your least favorite Gary Newman album? Does it bring you back to a particular time in your life? Uh, please leave any questions, comments, and constructive criticism in the comment box below. And up next is going to be the review of Metal Rhythm. I'm going to get that up as soon as I can. So until next time, this is Tyler King with New Review, talking about Gary Newman's Strange Charm, 4 out of 10.